Welcome back. Welcome, welcome. All right. So for this episode, we're going to touch on something that's been a little bit on the news these days, at least down yeah. here in South Florida. It's actually been, yeah, it's very almost alarming. <laughs> yeah. Because I haven't heard of this in a while now. Yeah, like, I know. You know, the last time I heard about, uh, we're going to be talking about mosquito-borne illnesses. Yeah. I mean, diseases or whatever. Yeah, mosquito-borne illnesses, diseases. Yeah. yeah. So the last time I feel that we had like that big scare of like West Nile and yeah. all that happening was several years ago. Like, yeah. Not that recent. And now it's like, again. And now it's back. Yep. And then we mm-hmm. always have like some sort of new yeah. disease come in, which we're going to talk about. Zika was a huge yeah. new one. Chikagunya was a big one. I had it. I know. Julie's we'll going to tell that. us about her experience with oh, it. God. Um, and now, you know, when we like study mosquito borne illnesses because it's so much to cover. Yeah. Um, and it's it's kind of crazy, but you know now we have a health advisory yeah. of malaria. I know it's malaria and um, West, West Nile. Nile. Yeah, it's a two health advisories from the CDC that we yeah. gotta look out for at least over here in, in um in Florida, in Florida, since we have so many mosquitoes. Yeah, but I think you know it's so crazy how, and I'm just talking out yeah. of my ass right now, no. but it's so crazy how the pandemic. Yeah how it affected so many things and yep. it's when you don't think about it sometimes you're like why why are we seeing like malaria like here you know malaria is something that it's like people would typically ask you like did you travel right outside of the u.s maybe yeah. to africa something like that and now it's you know it's the thing so many people stopped traveling exactly from the pandemic and now everyone wants to traveling big travel again they're like making up for old time's sake and then now there's so much international travel Mm -hmm. that we're seeing these diseases out of nowhere in places that they weren't before a big comeback in them yeah yeah it's pretty crazy and yeah you're absolutely right it's like a big change from like when COVID hit in 2020 yeah. to like now it's like well but that's exactly why it happened before and we hadn't seen it in a few years yeah like what you just said because of COVID it's crazy how much like it that affected sometimes and- I still can't believe that we lived a pandemic yeah and I know that you know in history um pandemics were you know associated I mean, I'm not going to say there was a lot of deaths with COVID and please, for the love of God, like I'm not here to have this conversation about whether COVID was fake or real. Not talking about that. I'm not talking. I'm saying the pandemic, whatever you want to believe it. Yeah. The pandemic really effed up a lot of things. Yeah. It changed a lot of things. It changed a lot of things. It changed the way people live. Mm -hmm. It changed the way that people travel and eat and do all these things. And there was a lot of deaths, whether you want to believe COVID existed or not, yeah. whatever it is. Point yeah. is, there was a lot of reported deaths. And um, it's just crazy to me because we, like, lived through a pretty crazy part of history. Well, nobody in in the recent past, nobody had, like, lived through a pandemic like that. Exactly, because you know? they didn't have the medicine and stuff like that. And even then, there was, like, so many deaths. I know, stuff. I know. The last time that there was, like, such a big pandemic, at least reported, like, was, like, and, like, you know, affected so many people was, like, I think the Spanish influenza or whatnot. Yeah. You know. H1N1. And, yep. Was huge, too. But it didn't, but it didn't catastrophically, like, no. stop no, no, the no. world from, yeah, like, yeah, almost no. turning, you know? No, no, no. This was definitely, <laughs> like, like, what we would consider a pandemic that affected everyone that people were Globally, scared yeah. of media like everyone got it was it was a lot point. it was a lot so so yeah that it did and why we're talking about that again it's because you know that did such a big big drastic change and then it's created all these domino effects and now years later yeah. we're still looking at the domino effects yeah and this looks like it's one of them yeah. like we had stopped this like we hadn't heard of like so many mosquito borne yep. illnesses like just pop out like with these re- what okay so they're not pandemics but they're like what like endemics yeah or, no like, they're endemic uh, yeah stuff like well okay so endemic is basically a disease that endemic to somewhere so okay. it's very common in a place so mm-hmm. um uh, it could be like i don't know for example like tuberculosis mm-hmm. usually endemic to third world countries um because okay. of whatever yeah. you know i can there's a million things yeah. that I can say about that. But just to make it short, it's like, so whatever is, you know, more common in that region, place, so that's what we consider an endemic. Okay. So before COVID, COVID was considered to be 
endemic to China. Yeah. Right? And then it became a pandemic where it was no longer just in China. It was in other places. Okay. All right. So then... So then, yeah, that's what so we're seeing here. So these mosquitoes, so like malaria and stuff exactly. like that, it's usually endemic to regions across Africa, mm-hmm. right? And then now it's like we're seeing it in other places. So that's why we find it weird because we're truly, it's really not endemic to us. Yeah, 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 exactly. So that we're, you know, we're going to touch up on like the most common ones, at least the more, yeah, just the more common ones because there's so many of them that we could do like several part series on this and we're not. We're going to, we've tried to condense it into one episode for you yeah. all. And if you so, guys want an episode specifically about one of these, then let us know. Just let us know. Yeah. Then- so we're going to just touch up on the highlights, yeah. you know, on each of these like more common ones. Yeah. And yeah, go from there. Yeah. So yeah. I hate mosquitoes. Me too. By the way, yeah. if there are two things in this world, insect wise, okay, that I hate, is roaches yeah. and mosquitoes yeah they can burn forever <laughs> I, know. I know they're I, know. I can truly fight someone on the reasons why they don't need to exist for me it's spiders but yeah i i hate mosquitoes like they're such a freaking nuisance like it's it's just i hate everything about them i hate everything about them yeah me too just they're gross i think i got traumatized because when i was younger i've mentioned my friend monica on this podcast before yeah but, you know, Monica's parents used to take us out on their boat and mm-hmm. stuff. And we used to go to Boca Chita, which is, you know, like this little island where you can grill and stuff like that. Right, right. And it was infested with mosquitoes. And and mostly when it's like dawn or dusk. Yeah, exactly. Those are the two worst times. Yep. So we went, Monica and I like went exploring, you know, being kids. Yeah. And then I came back and I was just literally head to toe covered yeah and since then i've had like some ptsd really with mosquitoes that i i hate them oh i hate I, them i see them and i i i get angry yeah like, yeah they ruin my day <laughs> <laughs> sounds stupid no 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 but i, I fucking hate that i hate them too like me and my kiddo we suffer from like big whelps from them yeah like yeah oh yeah you guys like have we get the reactions. big yeah we get i the... get them too but only to certain types oh like, yeah it doesn't happen all the time to me huh. but sometimes man dude i will have like it looks like cellulitis like yeah. a skin infection that's it and for my kiddo oh my god like he's gotten a little like they're they're getting a little better now whenever he gets bit by them but when he was a baby and like Dude, we, we avoided it big time. But he's like me. Like, they seek us out. Yeah. They really seek us out. Like, as yeah. soon as I step a foot out, and it's, especially in sunset, yeah, done. Yeah. Like, I'm getting at least one, no matter what repellent I wear, I'm getting it, you yeah. know? And unfortunately, my kid was the same freaking way. And when he was a baby, no matter, like, all the things that we would put on him, at least one bite. And back then, oh, my God, Eve, like, it would get, like, even bubbly. Like, he would, yeah. like, even the, like, what do you... It, yeah, like, like a blister. Exactly. It would turn like a blister. Mm-hmm. It was so bad, pobrecito. But like, yeah. So there are people like me that get like the big welts and like my kiddo. Then there's people like my mom and Mario. Nothing. Like nothing. they get bit and it's like they don't even itch. Like nothing. Nothing happens to them. It's crazy. Crazy. I, I, hate, just, like, I hate that. I don't. <laughs> I'm here I like, hate that. I'm here like, <laughs> you know, and when my kiddo like, and they're just like, oh, it's a great afternoon. And I'm like, can I? Like, oh, damn it. I know. <laughs> but anyway, so yeah, mosquitoes suck. And um, so these diseases, we're going to talk about them, like we said, and they're spread through their bite, you know? And they're really nasty little little buggers because they land on you and you don't even like feel it most of the time. Like, I'm like, like <laughs> and I hate, I hate talking about mosquitoes because of how much I hate them. Yeah. But yeah, and sometimes like those really big, black ones yeah, that are just like what and we they call... even leave a black ma- like mancha yeah, on like you when mancha you're... on you yeah. and those are like the dumb ones yeah that they're just around you every single time you try to waft them away and they're like mm, no i want i want to bite uh, you and you're just like ah! <laughs> it's so bad whatever anyways <laughs> this is what i think about my mosquitoes like the types <laughs> and you're just like ah! It's like a china. Like you're just like, oh god. Just how can I kill you? And I can't kill you every single time I, I like try. The wind blows you away. Or I have a whole thing. I don't know. And that's that we're like born and bred Miamians. Like, 
mosquitoes is like a thing yeah, here. It's, but... just, it's part of our community at this point. We hate them, but they're part of our That's why every community. time that like we see like hurricanes and stuff like that, <laughs> yeah. I'm kind of happy. Yeah. Okay, I'm not happy for no. the hurricane, you know. But no. it blows them away. But it blows them away. <laughs> exactly. It's so much wind that we don't actually see the mosquitoes. And for a little bit. For a little. Yeah. And, I'm, and I'm great with it. I know. It gives us a little bit of a break. Yeah. I hate them anyway. But yeah. So, um... Since we did talk about blood types not too long ago. Yeah, I know. I found this and he was like, what the fuck? Yeah, I know. No wonders. I have my answers now. <laughs> Basically, that type O bloods are, you know, like more... More susceptible. More susceptible to, to mosquito bites. To mosquito bites. You know, there's a whole study on it. I will link on it if you're more curious on that. But yeah, if you're type O like me, oh, there you go. Um, They kind of seek you out a little bit more. And then um, they're also attracted, mosquitoes, they're attracted to the color black. And therefore, black clothing attracts them. So that's another study from um, biologists. Um, there's an article. What is it? Experimental biology. That's mm-hmm. the, the article. And then according to a journal from Chemical Senses from Oxford University Press, mosquitoes are attracted to carbon dioxide because they could smell it from 164 yeah. feet away from you. Yeah. And you scent to hunt. Yeah. And I think like they're... I definitely believe the whole entire scent thing. Yeah. Um, not too long ago. 164 feet. That's far, man. So the other day I was oh. doing my neighbor's um, nails because mm-hmm. she like, whatever, she was just asking me to do her nails. And mm-hmm. then I was like, okay, cool. And you know, we were, it was like a really nice day. And I was like, let's do them outside. Yeah. Anyways, like some of us were in the pool and then I'm like, I'll do them outside with you. So whatever. We're just like talking. As soon as I opened the shine. Yeah. Oh my god. Really? They were everywhere. No way. Everywhere. And at first we were like, oh, you know, these mosquitoes. Yeah. Like they're, and then like we really started noticing. We're like, what is going on? Like, where are they coming from? They like can I don't know if there was some substance yeah, yeah. in the smell of the yeah. polish. There must be some chemical in there, yeah. I don't know, but they were swarming. Flies too. I don't know what the hell it was. And I literally told her, I was like, We uh, yeah. can't do this inside. We like, gotta go. We gotta go, yeah. <laughs> it's gonna be like man. a man. So the mosquito's gonna just land That's and so weird. melt into your nail polish. I wonder what chemical it was because like I get carbon dioxide because you know all mammals, you know everything mm-hmm. that they're gonna mm-hmm. suck the blood out of, you know, yeah. like releases carbon dioxide. So that's an evolutionary thing. Like I, that makes sense. But I wonder what freaking chemical was in there. I don't know, yeah. but I like want to just dress the whole entire backyard like with lemongrass and all those natural yeah. mosquito repellents. Yeah. <laughs> when I grow five lemon, uh, what lemon, lemon what grass. is it? Lemongrass trees or bushes, whatever bushes. they come from, <laughs> wherever it comes from, I, I want to grow it, <laughs> and I want to like hang little lemongrass, little yeah, just things, every- just everywhere, just everything, everything the works. I actually in Tampa, yeah, I um I had my cats right, uh-huh. yeah. and I didn't want to put like really harsh mosquito yeah, things because of my cat because i wasn't there i didn't know if they would eat it whatever. yeah so i ended up getting um this like natural mosquito repellent that was like lemongrass okay dude i went overboard because i hate mosquitoes no. i sprayed it so much that no. i had to leave my apartment <laughs> because i couldn't breathe the fumes and my neighbors no from downstairs no they came outside and they're like is someone like cooking or oh like so, with some spices? And I was downstairs and I was like, oh, why? And then they're yeah. like, it smells like something like really <laughs> zesty. And I was like, in my mind, I'm like, <laughs> you mean lemon? <laughs> Maybe. I don't know what you're talking about. I'm like, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> and I'm like, I'm going to go now. <laughs> <laughs> you, but you can follow that scent to my apartment. 100%. Oh my god. 100% you could follow that sense if you wanted to. Jesus, you bet. Right? <laughs> and it didn't work. Like, it worked. For like a minute. For a minute. Yeah. I, so I had to die again in the fumes of lemon zest. <laughs> oh my god. Okay, anyways. All right. So, and then a new study found that mosquitoes can find people. Um, to bite by smelling substances present in the human, I mean, on the human skin and in sweat, including lactic acid, uric acid, ammonia, ammonia. et cetera. So pee? Like what? I guess so. According to If you pee so, yourself, shower, because the mosquitoes are going to come after you. Fucking gross. Yeah. Like, shower, please. Like, regardless. Yeah. Not even for the regardless. mosquitoes. Forget the mosquitoes. Forget the mosquitoes. For us. 
fucking shower if you urinate <laughs> yourself for society. God's sake. Yeah, exactly. Gross. <laughs> Anyway, a small study submitted by PubMed of 14 participants found that mosquitoes were absor- observed. I can't freaking read today. Um, observed to land on participants more frequently after consuming a small amount of beer. What? Well, I don't know. Is it worth it? I mean, it's only 14 people. Like, should we even trust this really? Oh, 14 people. Yeah, it's only 14 people. Nah. Yeah. I'm still going to have my beer. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, nah. That's why I was like, I'm going to put this in here. Let's see what she says about this nah, study. <laughs> I'm still going to drink my beer. I need a higher yeah. number. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it needs to be more, yeah, a bigger sample size. Yeah, we need more power in this study. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So then um, why do some people like me develop um, swelling and welts that like we were talking about? And then apparently when mosquitoes bite, they inject some saliva and when drawing that blood. And then the saliva contains certain anticoagulants and proteins triggering the immune system to respond to these foreign substances, i.e. me. Yeah. Um, our body responds by releasing histamine, yep. a chemical released by white blood cells when your immune system is fighting allergens, yeah. which causes the itchiness inflammation. Exactly. So anytime you have a histamine reaction, we yeah. call that a histamine reaction. Um, it can be pretty intense. Some people, it's hives. So they break out into hives. That's a histamine reaction. Um, and then some people get like these massive welts, right? Okay. Yeah. But you know, if you're having a histamine reaction that's systemic, then you're going to have like the hives and stuff like that. If you're having a local histamine reaction, then that's when you see something more localized, which is like what you're saying. Okay. And sometimes, you know, sometimes when patients come in and they have a histamine reaction, yeah. they're like, oh no, it's an infection. And I'm like, eh. it's actually not an infection. Right. Which is good. Yeah. That's a good thing. Um, it's actually a very strong local allergic reaction. Okay. And it can come with crazy, like I've seen yeah. impressive histamine reactions. Yeah, yeah. So like taking up the whole leg. Oof. Sometimes if it's on the belly, it takes up like almost the whole entire side of one yeah. belly. Like yeah, the yeah. arm. We get it all the time with kids mm. on the face that their eyes swell up. Oof. And it, you know, it's like our job to figure out if this is an eye infection or if this is like a allergic regular reaction. allergic reaction. Sometimes kids will have swelling all in their ear. Oof. Um, so, and and it can it can be red. Mm-hmm. It could be hard. Okay. Okay. And yeah, it could be warm. Mine. Yeah. It could be warm, but that's that's all part of the histamine reaction. Okay. So anytime you have like those type of like, uh, you know, redness, Mm -hmm. heat and all that stuff, definitely go and just to make sure, get it checked by a doctor Yeah. and all of that. But usually Benadryl and Zyrtec do the trick. That's what I was going to ask you because like I I have um, like a little gel from Benadryl. Yeah. That's like that antihistamine gel and that really helps out MR. And even me, like if I get, if I get like a really big welt, then I mean, most of the time it's just like smaller welts. Yeah. But on MR, immediately I'll put that on him, yeah. and it helps out a lot. Yeah. Like, so because it's an yeah. antihistamine, yeah, so yeah. an antihistamine basically stops that histamine reaction. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. Well, now we're gonna jump into the different the diseases. Types. Yeah, yeah. Different types. And like I said, it, we're, we just picked like the very common ones, the ones that you've seen in the news, yeah. the ones you've heard about. Yeah. And we're gonna just like give you know little bits and pieces about what they are. So first one up, Zika virus. Zika virus. I remember when that was all yeah. over the news several years ago. I was a, I was a medical student when Zika virus Mostly came out. Mostly you for P... Well, back then, no. You were in no, med I was school, a school, so you weren't doing... Yeah, but I was, um, I was a fourth-year medical student, so I was already auditioning for my rotations for residency. Oh, okay. And I actually did an infectious disease rotation oh, as a fourth-year student, okay. and it happened to be... Maybe just a little after the whole entire Zika virus big. thing. It yeah. was big. I remember it um, in Grenada. I mean, in Mahina thing. Yeah, Grenada, yeah. even worse. Yeah, I mean, yeah, that's yeah. like mos- Mosquito Central. Yeah. You know, uh, everybody. The Caribbean was... islands were, were big for all of these mosquito born illnesses. Time. Big time. And I, like, correct me if I'm wrong. I, I, I know I have it somewhere here in the notes, but I have, like, a shit ton of notes for this yeah, episode. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Is it, this is the one that was, like, really associated and, like, scary for little kiddos, right? For babies for and whatnot. Pregnant pregnancy. women, exactly. There we go. Okay, yes. yeah. Every, you know, uh, we like every pregnancy should, you know, uh, okay, how can I say it? Like, I don't want to like alarm anyone that's pregnant that yeah. has like fever and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. But if you are pregnant and if you are sick and you have like cold symptoms and stuff like that, 
yeah, you know, most of the time it's just going to be a cold. Nothing's going to happen. Right. You know, but um, these type of viruses, like these kind of mosquito borne illnesses can sometimes cause congenital defects. Okay. So Zika virus was huge on that. That's what I remember. Yeah. And it was really sad because, well, Zika virus, not only was it mosquito borne, but it was also sexually transmitted, which was a huge thing. And that's so strange. And everyone was like, what? Yeah. Because it's like, how do you like, yeah, you wouldn't, I would, I would never have made that connection. Like, from yes. a mosquito to you could also pass it through sex. I like, know. So it was also sexually transmitted. So um, unfortunately, we didn't, we saw the first wave of Zika, mm-hmm. which was, you know, like the febrile illness. Yeah. Like you feel sick, the joint pains, malaise, all that stuff. Yeah. Yeah. And then. Which um, is easy to co- like to confuse with a cold. With a cold, Cause, flu, yeah. everything. Yeah. yeah. So, and then unfortunately we started seeing congenital defects. Mm. And then the biggest one associated with Zika was microcephaly. So it's when babies are born with a smaller um, head um, and they're like small in the percentiles, but it does come with, you know, contractures. It does come with like um, brain, you know, things with the nervous system associated with the nervous system. So then they started seeing that these babies were born with microcephaly and all these things. And they started kind of asking you know this is literally how medicine works of course you start investigating and then every single parent we ask them like what they ate what they did did they get sick and all these things trying to figure out and then this is how we figured out that a lot of the moms that had babies with microcephaly microcephaly can happen for a lot of different reasons but most of these cases were associated with an infections that mom had that were mosquito born and then that's how zika yeah so what's the prognosis for microcephaly like Well, microcephaly in general, you can have someone that's microcephalic and they're okay. Really? Yeah. They don't have any problems. Okay. You know, but again, like microcephaly is just a sign. Okay. Like, um, I don't want it like a a sign or a symptom. Okay. So you need to see where it's coming from. Right. 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 Like I have kids that are microcephalic and we did every sort of like evaluation and everything was okay. Yeah. Just they have a smaller head. Okay. You know, could it be something genetic? Probably, Maybe. Yeah, you, you know, just, yeah. we just don't know. Um, but they're normal and they go to school and they okay. do everything, you okay. know. But we have like kids that are microcephalic because their brain did not develop. So if your Got brain it. doesn't grow, your yeah. head is not going to grow. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. So, um, so those type of prognoses is really, it can really vary. Yeah. Like there are some kids that have profound mm-hmm. um, neurological defects. And then there are kids that have mild neurological defects so they have the microcephaly they have some symptoms maybe some contractures in their limbs okay maybe some developmental delays um things like that but then there are others that are pretty more severe okay you know like those are the ones that like need more yeah. attention specialized care and stuff like right that. right right yeah and then i like at least by what i was reading that was where the fear was coming from yeah. like with this virus at least you know yeah. like getting to that like severe like microcephaly and whatnot yeah okay well, a little bit about the history, where it came from, and what uh, and what not. Um, it was first ID'd in Uganda in 1947 in the rhesus um, mac mac I can't say it. macaw macaw uh, it's the right. macaw. Yeah, there you go. Macaw. <laughs> I hate monkeys. FYI, I really don't like monkeys. I don't know what it is about, about them. You. I hate monkeys, bro. It's like I hate moths. I didn't know you exactly. Hate like no, but you have like a fear of moths. I do, and okay. birds. It, you okay? Spiders for me are like moths to you. <laughs> Okay, how you feel about birds is how I feel about Did monkeys. Did I tell you about my bird attack No. Mount Sinai? No. A story for another day. But wait until you hear that shit. You're going to die. What the f- You're going to laugh your ass off. But anyways. But don't you have, like, parents at home? No, my mom has birds. I don't touch them. <laughs> oh, my God. When my mom goes out for vacation, you know, the they're lucky day- they get food from me. The other day, like I noticed that, yeah, and I'm like, well, it was a, um, it was Nora's birthday, yeah, and I'm like, but like, don't get me wrong, like I don't hate birds in the sense like if they're in a cage, fine. You see, that's that's how I feel about monkeys. But like yeah. you, that you like feed the peacock in your neighborhood, <laughs> I would never, I would never. And they're so pretty. No, I mean they're beautiful, but from a distance. The, I have to show you the TikTok that I made the other day of the freaking bird. No, I'm pretty sure I saw it. That you're like, what? What have I done to you? And I was like, on your car. Or yeah. yeah, I'm like, what have I done to deserve this? Why are you in my freaking car? I just fed you, asshole. Like, come on. Did you name it? You yeah, Chachi. Gary? Oh, Chachi. I was like, Gary. <laughs> Gary. <laughs> Something. I don't know. You made him like super white. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> but no, and they're beautiful, and I love peacocks, and 
actually when i was younger i used to play with parrots a lot yeah like my dad had an auto parts store that was next to a um, a bird store yeah so i was little and i was bored at the auto parts store so i would always I go i came from then i think it just came i think it came from my older brother my really? older brother would get attacked by birds and stuff and i think like he like passed down the fear i'm no pretty way. sure my younger brother also has like a fear of birds too no, no but now after my attacks from the birds from mount sinai I don't want to see a bird near me. And I got like attacked, attacked. Like it like hit my head. You know, in Grenada, they, there was like a, like a breeding season for crows. Yeah. And well, they would even, a crow. Yeah. They would even, they warn students. Like it was a real thing. And we saw it. Like it didn't happen to me or Mario, luckily, but we did see it like in front of us, like especially, and they would tell women like with long hair or whatever, they would put it up yes. in buns that they would go straight to it. And you, yes. we saw it. Like it's not. Because they're like nesting or whatever. It's super yes, weird. exactly. So you know what I had to do? I had to walk with an umbrella and hold on a second. You think that that would stop them? No. no. It would come and it would like hit the umbrella and I would be like running to the hospital. I was like, ah, like save me. But hold on a second. It got so bad. It got so bad that one of the other physicians was pregnant. Oh, no. And a bird attacked her oh, and no. she fell and no. went into early labor. And I like went to security and I was like, listen, I'm like, this is a problem. I'm like, you all need to do whatever you need to do to get oh these God. birds. Yes. yes, it was terrible. Jesus. Well, OK, how you feel about birds is how I feel about macaws and monkeys and all that. Like, I, I don't need to see them. I don't need to touch them. Like in Grenada, there was like this thing that you would go and I don't know, like tour some like part of the rainforest or whatever uh -huh. and some of the locals were like yeah look at this monkey like you want to take a photo with it i'm like get that shit away from me <laughs> get that shit away from me like i'm not scared of them like i'm not scared of them yeah, at all I but i just it. i feel like they're way too cr close to us in the evolutionary yeah ladder yeah that doesn't make me feel comfortable <laughs> I'm not comfortable. Janet's looking at the monkey like, I know you, bitch. Yeah. I like, know what you're trying to you do. You're a, trying to take over the world. Yeah. You have opposable thumbs. You do tools. You're no, no, no. You make tools. Not you do tools here. Cheers. Hence, hence that. I can't. I don't like it. And then they look at you like they know. I know. Oh, God. No. Ugh. <laughs> Duh. <laughs> Fuck monkeys. Look, and this fucking monkey. It came from, from a fucking monkey anyway. From a rhesus macaw. Yeah. It's a macaw. Is it macaw? I feel like I'm. Isn't there like a no, bird it's a macaw? It's a macaw. Okay. There's also a bird called the macaw, but yeah, this, right. Oh, but it's spelled is, differently. I think so. That's it. Okay. But I'm no, like, the monkey is definitely a macaw. Because I'm famous for mispronouncing shit, so that's why. Anyway, <laughs> for the macaw monkey, followed by evidence of infection and diseases, humans in other African countries in the 1950s. So that's where it came from, and it was from a while ago. Most people do not develop symptoms. If symptoms do occur, they start around three to 14 days after infection. Those that do typically have generally um, have these symptoms, they generally have mild rash, fever, conjunctivitis, muscle and joint pain, malaise, headache that lasts for two to seven days. So it sounds a lot like a flu. Yeah. yeah. Like it could ease it. And mostly when you wait that long for you to even develop this, it could even be two weeks yeah. after. Like last thing you're thinking of is, I don't even remember two weeks ago like if, you know, if I was sick. Yeah. yeah. It's crazy. And sometimes these infections can be pretty mild. Like some that, of the yeah. moms that I talked to, they'd be like, yeah, I had like a little bit of like, you know, tired, but I thought it was just like a right shoot. And literally, it's always, it was almost always the same story. It was like, it's so I felt scary. sick. I didn't even have any fever though, right. but I had like some congestion, like body aches, headache, but it went away in like two to three days. And then it ends up being like something that you actually had to worry about. It's yeah. crazy. Anyway, so what you were just saying, very dangerous during pregnancy could cause infants to be born with microcephaly and other congenital, um, congenital, congenital. <laughs> malformations as those lip contractures, high muscle tone. So what does it mean like high muscle tones? Well, limb contractures is, is that like, uh, I don't, I don't know if they're trying to like explain in like in a little bit different, but high muscle tone and limb contractures basically worries you for some neurological oh, problems. Oh, okay, okay. Because your brain is what controls your muscle tone. Mm. Um, so if you have anything going on in the brain, or I should say, if you see someone mm -hmm. with muscle contractures and stuff like that, you should worry about something neurological. Okay. So it's the same way, you know, like some people have stroke and yes. they lose like a lot of the ability of like half their side of their face or they're talking Understood. or something like that then that is muscle tone so that's why we worry about something in the brain um, Understood. okay so same thing goes for like little kids like you should always uh, 
kids should have tone and stuff mm-hmm. like that. And then it should be a regular tone. It shouldn't be hypertonic and it should be hypotonic. So, okay. Okay. So then I have abnormalities and hearing loss as well as fetal loss, stillbirth, preterm birth and miscarriage. Yeah, the stillbirth and the preterm birth was also a big thing with Zika. Yeah, I remember that. Like I just remember in Grenada that it was like really scary. Mm -hmm. You know, people were really like pregnant people because we had a lot of like significant others that were pregnant and even locals that were pregnant and yeah. everybody was and especially really like scared. in a caribbean island oh yeah really scared and i mean there's less resources to test too there mm-hmm. so it's like it's hard and the testing really like even after when i was a student like after the wave of like zika where we were actively there was research studies going on and stuff like that like even the testing was really difficult like these yeah. kind of testing like we had to test the baby we had to test mom yeah. we had to see if there was a current infection or not we had to send the results to like That's the it. florida department of health and it was just it's a lot it's a lot yeah. it's a lot and mostly for like small caribbean islands like yeah. it's it's rough but anyway so also transmitted from mother to fetus hence why the mm-hmm. the scariness of it mm-hmm. um and pregnancy as well through sexual contract um contact yeah blood transfusion and possibly through organ transplantation yeah so no no treatment or vaccines are available to supportive care avoid and sets until dengue is ruled out we're going to touch upon dengue and why mm-hmm. that is um to avoid bleeding risk and then in february 2016 who declared zika related microcephaly a public health emergency that's when you were talking about like this whole thing when was that 2016 that was, yeah 2016 and exactly. i graduated i graduated 2018 so yeah. that makes sense and it was basically because of the correlation with zika virus and congenital malformations that it was pretty much confirmed um declared it was declared later, you know, to end on that same year. But still, like, it, it was pretty devastating for, for those people. It was. People it's that, really devastating. Yeah. It's something very, oh, very sad. You know, yeah. uh, I always say it's like, and I know this is supposed to be, like, funny medicine. But anyways, it's, like, very, yeah, still, like, it's very gotta, emotional to know, like, that you think that your pregnancy is, like, totally, like, okay. And, and then, all, then of, all of a sudden, like, it was something and then you know there's a lot of guilt in everything of so i'm sure people are like did i have to travel did i have to do that maybe if i yeah. would have gone it you know so, yeah yeah yeah. of um, course there, there's always gonna be and mostly like being a mom being a parent you're yeah you're riddled with guilt you know but yeah the, i mean it's a mosquito what are you gonna do you yeah know? but these are some things that i actually like <laughs> i also used to like educate like my patients and patients moms and mm-hmm. stuff. I, i'm not an ob guy, so yeah. i don't see a lot of pregnant people but, like, it should be something that you're like, hey, look, like, there's a lot of mosquito-borne illnesses. Mm-hmm. And, you know, because a lot of people do the baby moon yep. and all that stuff and yep. they go travel and stuff. And you should really be aware of, like, the things that you're at risk for, especially if you're going somewhere that's not your yeah. local place. Exactly. So. Exactly. And so, yeah. And like we said, it does require lab confirmation for you to know that yeah. it really is Zika. Like, mm-hmm. you can't, it's not like an oral thing or something yeah. very blatantly, like, you know, that you could just diagnose clinically, like, exactly through the eye or whatever. Mm-hmm. So that was Zika. And then now the one that's been popping up in the news, West Nile virus. This is yeah. a hefty one. Because, I, I mean, it's been around for a while and, like, it does a lot. And yeah. But um, so a little bit about its history again. It was um, first isolated in the West Nile, mm-hmm. hence the, the name, of Uganda in 1937. West Nile virus can cause a fetal neurological disease in humans. Mm-hmm. So really scary and devastating, too. I know. Um, approximately 80% of people who are infected will not show any symptoms. So it's fucking nuts. I know. Like, that's just crazy, you know? I know. And especially so for pregnant scary. women. You yeah. Know? Mm-hmm. And um, those 20% that they do experience fever, um, I mean, experience some symptoms, they're usually fever, headaches, tiredness, body aches, nausea, vomiting, occasional with a skin rash, and swollen lymph nodes. Again, something that's very, like, easily mistaken for, like, a slew of other things. I like, know. that sounds like sometimes a cold that I get, you know? My colds, a lot of the times, are just that. Just that. I know. <laughs> yeah. I know. And uh, approximately one to 150 people infected will develop more severe forms of the disease called neuroinvasive disease that includes headache, high yeah. fevers. So this is more... The high fevers is like a big thing in like West Nile virus. Yeah. And stuff like that. Especially like if you have prolonged fevers. Mm. This is when we kind of start digging into the... Like what is it? What is it? Yeah. Like how can I explain it? If, okay. if someone comes in and they're having, you know, fever and stuff like that like we usually chalk it up to the most common things yeah but if you're having fever and neurological symptoms and stuff like that that's when we start diving in more into these mosquito borne illnesses which are also called like the arbor 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 viruses okay which is basically like viruses that come from mosquitoes yeah yeah so 
um definitely like these mosquito diseases cause a lot of neurological things yeah and that it's just crazy to me man mm-hmm. and it's like how 80 percent of the people won't even know i know that's just bonkers anyway um so yeah like weakness paralysis like yeah. serious illness can occur at any age however people older than 50 and immunocompromised are at highest risk of course yeah um, West Nile virus is mainly transmitted to people through bites of infected mosquitoes. Mosquitoes become infected when they feed on infected birds. <laughs> God damn these birds. Those are birds. I hate them. You're like, you see, I have a reason. I have a reason to hate birds and mosquitoes. They should just be, I don't know if we should be done with birds, but we should be done with mosquitoes for with sure. mosquitoes, yeah. Yeah, I don't disagree Who with that. Who told the mosquito to bite the bird? I don't know. I, why, how? Who told the mosquito to bite the bird? That's what I want to know. It's the fault of the mosquito. 100%. I, if they weren't so nasty, blood-sucking disgusting disgusting and how how do you even bite a fucking bird it has feathers on it like how how, how do you even like i don't know i don't know that's that's disgusting to me too (laughs) that's disgusting the feathers of a bird that's disgusting to me it's like holding a bunch of shit every time a feather a bird ruffles its feathers (laughs) i want to die i'm like give me away all the shit that just let into the air (laughs) i'm weird (laughs) no, I literally just, every time a bird ruffles its feathers, I walk the other way. I just have the image of a bird like going like they do. And they're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm like, get me out, get me out, get me out, get me out. I just, it just released a ton of things well, into the environment because it releases a ton of crap. Birds do that because algo le molesta. So it's like, get it off of me. And then it can bring, it comes on to me. <laughs> or at least that's what I think they're doing. Yeah. Oh my God, okay. <laughs> So back to the mosquito biting the bird. The infected bird, right. <laughs> virus of... Nasty ass bird. The virus eventually goes to the mosquito's salivary glands and infect a human when bitten. Uh, transmitted through contact with other infected animals or blood or other tissue. Very small number of infections caused by organ transplants, blood transfusions, and breast milk. It's fucking nuts. Yeah, well, we were just fluid, so... Yeah, we were just talking about breastfeeding. Are we recording? Yeah, right down here. Okay, I just saw this little thing and I didn't oh, see this moving. No, no, no. Look, look at the, the numbers. Oh, right well, down I here. see it. I see it. I see it. Yeah, oh. yeah, yeah. You no, were like, good. I was like, I swear to God, <laughs> I am going to murder someone. <laughs> oh, what do you mean? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, it's okay. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> didn't mean to scare you. <laughs> Julie almost. Okay. My hands got clammy. No, I know. If you were like going to kill somebody. <laughs> okay, anyway. Oh my god, okay. So the salivary uh, yeah, so they uh transmitted through the salivary glands after biting the stupid bird. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, it goes from their um oh, okay, so that's where it was through through the um, breast milk. And then yeah. there is one reported case of transplant Sental? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Transplacental, mother to child, West Nile virus transmission. Transplacental. So, That's it. You see? <laughs> Don't listen to me, guys, when it comes to like <laughs> I love pronouncing these. some. I'm gonna make a list of all these things and just do a blooper of Julie's <laughs> to pronounce. But the weirdest thing is that Julie has the best vocabulary. I, it's just like salacious. It's, it's in my head. But then it comes out bad. It's like, it's fine in my head. And then when I'm saying it out, it's, it's, there's a problem there. I, I need to talk to someone for that. But anyway. Incubation period. Again, three to 14 days. I don't fucking know what I was doing two weeks ago. Like, how the hell am I going to remember? I'm a Everything bite. has an incubation period. So. Jeez. Anyway. And then to date, no human to human transmission through casual contact. Okay. Um, casual. Yeah. But that's like, when we say casual, that's like touching right yeah i think that's what they're trying like casual is just like you know you literally just see someone and yeah you have some sort of transmission okay and i'm guessing i mean there's nothing called like casual contact you know what i mean okay like it's either direct contact a respiratory contact Mm. droplet okay so i don't know what they're trying to say like casual contact like maybe just like not sexual or something like that yeah yeah i think that's it um and this is from the who um who fy 
And then, um, okay, can cause severe disease and death in horses, which is like a big money problem for like a lot of people down yeah. in the south and whatnot. These thoroughbreds that cost like millions of dollars sometimes. Yeah. It's like a big deal. Anyway, and then vaccines available for horses, but yeah. not yet for people. That's how, that's how important it is, man. I know. Like the, the horses have the vaccine for this. I know. We don't. <laughs> <laughs> um, supportive care for people, even those with neuroinvasive, um, invasive West Nile virus, which often involves hospitalization, intravenous um, fluids, respiratory support, and prevention of secondary infections. And birds are the natural hosts of West Nile virus. <laughs> and of course, once again, labs are needed to confirm diagnosis. Without that, you, you, know, you, yeah. you need the lab to like confirm it. Yeah, exactly. And a lot of these labs... Um... They're like panels. Yeah. So we basically send off testing. Honestly, a lot of the tests, in my experience, a lot of the testing that we do is usually like um, from spinal fluid. Ugh. So cerebral spinal fluid, which mm-hmm. is the fluid that surrounds your brain and your spine and all of that. So, um, and we send it off for testing. Mm-hmm. But um, And it's like these specialized labs too. They are. They're very, very, very special yeah. and they're very expensive. Yeah. But, and that's why it's not something that's like readily tested. Yeah. It has to be like things, you know, that we've ruled out a lot of other things and we're trying to find a cause to it. Mm-hmm. So then that's when we go ahead and do those, those types of tests. Makes sense. Yeah. yeah. I remember when back then my mom was still working at that lab and it was like this big Zika virus, mm. the, you know, the outbreak back in 2016. And she was getting a lot because she was she was working like in a small specialized lab mm-hmm. and they had it. But it was like to get that, you know, that OK to run it was like pretty much the blood of a virgin. Mm-hmm. <laughs> no pun intended. It's true. You know, to get the OK from the insurance companies and whatnot yeah. to like because it's it's, it's so specialized. Yeah. But anyway. All right. So next up, the Chica. What I got. Chikagunya virus. Chikagunya was later. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. That was a lot. Uh, no, it was during medical school too. It was during medical school it. for yeah. It was during medical school for Mario. But remember, he was after you. Like you, you finished medical school before him. So I'm not sure. Like, hold on. I want to say I, I was either a medical student or a resident when Chikungunya came. Out. We were for sure. Uh, Mario was for sure in medical school because so it was between the period of 2013, 14, and 2014. It was around there. So yeah, it was before Zika. Yeah. <clears throat> and it was dude it, it was it was definitely before zika yeah yeah and it was bad like yeah. i mean it, it wasn't was as bad in the sense of like where well, you could get like you know with pregnant you know if you were pregnant or whatever at least that we know of like yeah. i mean but i got it and that was not fun no so tell us about your experience well um i got bit in some in some way somehow you know one day and all of a sudden i started getting like these really high fevers and I'm the type of person that even if I have like a bad like flu, cold, whatever, it's rare for me to get a fever. Like yeah. it's really, really rare. And I just started running these fevers. I wouldn't go away. I'm like, man, this is weird. How many days did you have fever? A good week. Yeah. So like, you know, this is what I'm telling you. Like yeah. fever that like persists. These yeah. These are the times where people it, start digging into it wasn't these like, kind of diseases. It wasn't like two or three days. No, no, no. Yeah. It was like a full week. And then my, oh my God, I was so tired. Like, I could not get out of bed. And I just felt horrible. Like, the whole malaise. Like, extreme fatigue. Horrible malaise. And my joints were killing yeah. me. Which was a huge thing with chikagunya. Oh the joint pain. Oh, my God. It felt like the closest thing that I was able to compare it to was, like, if you had a little... Think of, like, this... A ball. A ball of needles. Mm-hmm. Like, a little tiny ball of needles that just went from, like, little joint to another joint to all over your body. And it would just like sneak up. That's how I felt because it was like pinching in between. Like, it's such a horrible. It, it it just sucks so bad. And I mean, but it's the weirdest thing because again, it's like not not like a typical cold because you don't have runny nose, you don't have coughing, you don't have any of that. No. But yet you're feeling like if you have no a with bad... chikungunya, which Julie also has, is the recurrent symptoms after. Exactly. At that time, I I got the the rashes and it was mostly like under my axilla. Yeah. And right now that I'm fighting off whatever my kid has, like yeah. whatever cold he has, every time I get a cold or I'm fighting off a cold, even if it's not bad, because like, look, right now yeah. I, I feel fine. Yeah. But my body is fighting something. I'm like coughing, as you guys yeah. probably heard me cough like five times already. Um, anything that I'm fighting off cold wise, virus wise, yeah. I will get a little flare up. So it's like these little pinches and it's the typical viral. What is it called? The 
there's like a word for the viral rashes, like viral. Exanthem. Like, that's it. Yeah. <clears throat> because I know that Mario has said that before yeah. and I can never remember that word. It's yeah. classic in the sense that it's like sometimes it itches, but then if you mm. touch it, it burns. Burns. Mm. And mind you, I have like, it, they don't even look like when I first got chikagunia when I had it completely acute, mm -hmm. it was like a bigger rash, like yeah. a way bigger, very prominent rash. Now it's more like little, little dots. Yeah. Like maybe it's like two or three of them, but they bother. Yeah. Like you, sure. oh my God, they, like they're the tiniest little things, but they bother so bad. Like anything. And you get the joint pain again. Yeah. So right before we started this yeah, episode. Yeah, it's really funny. We were just talking about this. She was like, oh, how, how's your knee? Because like, what was it, Monday? Yeah, like Monday. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, it was Monday. Okay. I was like, man, Evie, like we were talking. I'm like, I don't know what's going on. Like I woke up in the wrong side of the bed. Like I don't, I didn't do anything differently from my regular workout or anything. Like I, you know, everything's status quo. Nothing's yeah. changed. And my knee is killing me. Like I could, like couldn't even stretch it out all the way. Like it was really bad. Like I hadn't had it that bad in years. And now we were talking about it, and she's, and she's like, yeah, because you know, joint pain. And then like I was looking over the notes, and then all of a sudden I'm like, it's part of the freaking flare up. I had the rash right now. That's what it was. It wasn't anything that I did. It was a stupid like, you know, chicken uh, ganya. It's back for revenge. Can we give her a name? Huh? Can we give her a name? Chica. Chica, yeah, Chica, Chica's yeah. got it. Yeah, it's fucking Chica. Chica. That's what I, that, damn well, it, Chica. Everybody in Grenada called it, oh, you got the Chica? Because that's how, I, that's how common it got in freaking Grenada. <laughs> well, I mean, yeah, I mean, that was, it was the, oh my God. There was like a lot of like Thailand too. Thailand mm -hmm. was a big place too. I think, not just the Caribbean, I think. Well, yeah, that's exactly it. It came from yeah, Africa, Asia. Asia. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's, for, you know, there were like all these sporadic things, but yeah, there was really common And a lot of people, Asia. we like, we talked about like the different because a lot of the mosquito illnesses were <laughs> causing <laughs> it's like i need to learn how to talk into my mic um <laughs> a lot of the um mosquito viruses mm -hmm. um cause a lot of the same symptoms so it's like yeah. the fever for lots of days um yeah we or, just saw it yeah, yeah the rash the yep. joint pain yep. and stuff like that so it was like, I remember every time we would have a patient with that. We had a patient in residency. It was part of a case presentation that we did. But it was like fevers, ongoing fevers, what joint was it, pains, rash. She ended up having chikagunya. Huh. Um, but we had to work her up for dengue, yeah. for Zika, for all these things because they're all, all almost the same. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it's, it's crazy. It's insane. Yeah. But um, yeah, so exactly, literally exactly what you were saying. It's easy to diagnose dengue and yeah. Zika with chikagunya. <clears throat> um, so it causes, like I said, like I was explaining and how it was really, it, this is awful. 10 out of 10 do not recommend. <laughs> causes fever and severe joint pain. I really did have that. And I'm still struggling for yeah. 10 years later, yeah. like nine or 10 years later, I'm still like getting the flare ups from it. Have you ever thought of, who, who diagnosed you? I'm just interested. It was there like in their, so, okay. I was never classically like diagnosed from it yeah but i was remember i was doing research yeah, with yeah, yeah. the school of medicine and whatnot yeah. and then i was out for the count for a while like yeah. maybe two weeks worth i was out for the count like i couldn't collect samples or none of that so then um because i was doing two researches at the time i was doing the health economics um paper article whatever for pancreatic cancer and then i was doing the other one on marine biology so the marine biology was more hands-on i had to yeah. go into the water collect the collect plastic samples, samples yeah put them in the test tubes whatever like up all of uh, you know, all that buffer enzymes, all that crap. So anyway, I was out for the count. I couldn't. Like I needed somebody to go ahead and do it on the days that I couldn't for those two weeks. And <clears throat> the professor that I was working under for that one, for the marine biology, she's like, oh, I have a really good friend of mine. And he's a professor. He works at the lab here in school. Mm -hmm. um, let's talk to him. Maybe he could like get you in for that. So I explained to him everything. He took blood sample of mine, you know, like because I did a routine blood sample mm -hmm. at their clinic. Okay. And then he's like, do you mind if I collect from that blood sample for the routine, like collect it to yeah. test for it? And I'm like, yeah, go ahead and whatever. So it came out that, that he, <clears throat> since I was part of like a research study and like, since I was part of that research study, like I, my name wasn't involved or anything like that. He's like, look, like, I'll let you know, like in the download, like, you know, because I was like patient A, yeah. God, whatever, yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. he's like, you know, I just have to, I need to just put you with the demographics, but I can't say that it's you per okay. se, you know, whatever, yeah, for yeah. HIPAA and whatnot yeah. and all this bunch of stuff. But it came to, you know, to be that, yeah, like I 
that chica. Oh my God. So it was all of that. Like I had to go through all those hoops because again, super specialized freaking yeah. stuff. So he had to send it out. Like those, yeah, all yeah. those blood samples were, did yeah. not stay in Grenada. No, no, no. Like, those are usually ones out. that are sent out labs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's how it was. And, and yeah, it's all these things, like the muscle pain, the headaches. I had really bad headaches. Like the headaches were blinding bad. It was, it was awful. Nausea, fatigue, the rash, <clears throat> the disease onset four to eight days after the bite. I'm sure it was. I can't even tell you because, of course, we're living in Grenada. God only freaking knows. Yeah. Um, the joint pain, if it's often debilitating, I'm telling you that it was extremely painful. Um, it usually lasts for a few days, but maybe prolonged, lasting weeks, months, or even years. Luckily, mine only comes and goes as like viral, like mm -hmm. flare up. Um, no vaccine or treatment. It's just like um, supportive care, as you know. Um, and then I did see this, like Paris. So, what is paracetamol? Paracetamol is the like European acetaminophen. Oh, okay. 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 Yeah. There we go. Okay. Because I was like, what the heck is that? Anyway, I don't want to say European, but outside of the US, they use paracetamol a lot. Okay. Yeah. Because I know that I had to take only acetaminophen because until I got ruled out for a dengue, because yeah. of course the NSAIDs and whatnot. Yeah. Yeah. And then it's underestimated the number of infected, obviously, because of how hard it is to like, you know, rule out with the labs and whatnot. Um, severe symptoms and death are rare and usually um, relating to something else. It is an RNA virus, so it's like weird in that aspect. Yeah. Um, first ID ID'd in the United Republic of Tanzania, Tanzania, sorry, in 1952, and it can. It's Tanzania. Tanzania. I've definitely been saying Tanzania before. Yeah, that's oh, great. Well, okay. no, 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 I'm I sorry. Mean, and nope. I learn. I learn. How many How many things have I said wrong, like on the daily? <laughs> like, come on. <laughs> It can ingest the virus and then replicates in the mosquito in several days, gets into the salivary glands, can be transmitted to a new human Those host. Those fucking when... salivary glands. Yeah, that's exactly can it. Can we genetically modify to zap the salivary glands of mosquitoes? Yeah, I know. Is there something that we can feed them? It would be amazing. destroys them? It would be amazing. Then once bitten, the virus begins to replicate in the newly infected hosts and reaches high concentrations in the blood. At this point, they can further infect other mosquitoes and the cycle goes on. And yeah, like we said, detected through blood samples. Okay. I'm just, I'm just thinking right now. I yeah. don't know. This is definitely off topic. I uh -huh. just, I just talked, I just thought about it. Mosquito repellent. Mm -hmm. Is there something that could kill instead of repel? But then you run the risk of it affecting you in that sense. No, I don't have to wear it. What if oh, I just okay, set okay. something off into the corner of the house that I think attracts? There is. Okay. I think there is, but like, is I don't... that what's the TNT? I don't know. There's like a new like mosquito thing called like TNT and it literally okay. like zaps them. Oh, okay. Do they attract them to a box? I don't know. Okay. Well, oh, I we'll, okay. we'll look into that. Yeah. <laughs> Dengue fever. This one's terrible. So this is bad. Um, this is what everybody yeah. fears. And that's why like whenever you have these symptoms or like don't take NSAID because NSAID, we need to yeah. see if it is dengue or not. Yeah. So um, there were a lot of these in, in, um, in Grenada. And I actually had a neighbor that he had the hemorrhagic form. Of yeah, it. the hemorrhagic. Well, that's the, that's the dengue. That's like the most like um, severe. severe form of dengue, which is hemorrhagic dengue. Yeah. So. Well, they also call it break bone fever. That's how yeah. horrible it is. This is like very common. This is like something that's like, at least in my, my parents, yeah. like they say that in Cuba is like very, very, very common. Dengue is very common. Mm -hmm. And it, they literally say that it feels like you got run over by a bus. Awful. That's awful. My God. I can't imagine. And break bone fever, like yeah. breaking a bone pain. Yeah. I've never had dengue, so I don't know what it feels like, but no. I've taken care of patients that have gone through it yeah. and I worked with people that know people that have had dengue and it never fails like they say that it's awful yep that's it. everything that I've heard is exactly the same that it's really really bad but anyway um viral infection transmitted through infected mosquito bite as all of these about half of the world's population is now at risk with dengue with an estimated 100 to 400 million infections during each year yeah that's a lot um, mostly when you're talking about only a centralized region, that's yeah, a lot of people. That is a lot of people. We're only, th these these regions, like, I mean, these mosquitoes are not going to be in freaking Russia or something yeah, like that, yeah, yeah. you know? It's going to be mostly Caribbean, yeah. you know. High humidity. Yeah, high humidity high areas, you know, all areas, that. So, yeah. Anyway, um, found in tropical, like, literally, it was just saying, it's tropical and subtropical climates worldwide, mostly urban and semi-urban areas. Many are asymptomatic at first or produce only mild illnesses. Dengue can occasionally cause more severe cases, even death. Symptoms include high fever of 104, for example. Yeah. Severe headache, pain behind the eyes. Oh, 
I hate it when I get a migraine that hurts like that. Yeah. Those and migraines are the they're worst. Coming- Sometimes there you can have what's called a myositis, which is basically inflammation of the muscle. Mm-hmm. And it can happen in any muscle. And our eyes have muscles, yeah. right? So sometimes you can even have like something like this where a virus like kind of infiltrates that muscle mm-hmm. and then you can have that pain. So I, I can't even imagine. Yeah. Oh my god. Anyway. Um swollen glands, body aches, nausea, vomiting, rash. Most will get better in about a week or two. People who are infected for the second time are at higher risk for severe dengue. And then severe dengue needs hospitalization and can be fatal. Yes. Severe dengue symptoms include severe abdominal pain, persistent vomiting, rapid breathing, bleeding, gums, or nose. Fatigue, restlessness, mm-hmm. blood and vomit or stool, being very thirsty, pale, cold skin, feeling weak. If symptoms occur, they usually begin four to ten days after infection and last for two to seven days. Yeah. Yeah, it sounds Yeah, awful. you're dehydrated, you're in pain, you're, you're bleeding, you're, fe- you're, you're fevering, you have hemorrhagic dengue, which is you're oh. bleeding from everywhere. Oh my God. And it's awful. It, it truly is. Yeah. It's terrible. Um, no treatment, only supportive care with pain medicine, um, early detection and access to proper medical, I mean, med- medical care greatly lowers fatality rates for severe dengue. Avoid onsets because of the bleeding. Yep. Um, vaccine available collected, I mean, called Dengvaxia for people who have had dengue at least once and live in places where it is common. common so yeah. it's not available for just dengue. It's only available like if you've had dengue if you've before. Had it, yeah, exactly. Okay. And then incidence has grown dramatically worldwide. A majority of cases are asymptomatic or self-managed, therefore, um, un, un, you know, underrecorded. One modeling estimate indicates 390 million dengue virus infections per year, of which 96 million manifest clinically. Another study estimates that 3.9 billion people are at risk, spreading to new areas such as Europe with explosive outbreaks occurring. First time recorded in France and Croatia in 2010. So it's like you're saying, like these viruses are going everywhere. Everywhere. Like it's just it's crazy. And then the next one that we're seeing in the news. Yep, another one that's- Really scary. Yeah, which the other day I was seeing <clears throat> some people like, you know, there was a conversation about like malaria and they're like, oh, but I haven't traveled and stuff like that. No. Guess what? You don't need to travel anymore. Not malaria anymore. can come to you if there's a lot of high turnover in traveling, Yep. especially Look, I'm just going to say it. Everyone comes to Florida. Yeah. Yeah. Florida's a huge, like, touristy spot. And, um, and not even, you know, something that people don't think about. Our airport is a huge it's international a huge airport. Hub. It's a huge hub. So a lot of people do layovers. Yes. And not only that, but it's like you combine people coming in because they're international and it's a huge hub. Then people are coming in, getting bitten by these mosquitoes, right? Mm-hmm. So it's like the transmission of disease. So those people probably left. Yeah. They went somewhere else. Yeah. Okay. But the mosquitoes didn't. Right. Right. They didn't hop right. on the airplane with them. Exactly. So, and then they go and like they infect. But yes, there's actually is like a huge like outbreak of malaria going on. And it was um in central Florida-ish. That's coast Florida. Right. So <clears throat> Sanibel. Yeah. All those places, which is um, huge. Like those are huge places where people go on vacation I in know. Florida. Oh, we do. Like almost That's every what I'm year, saying. Like yeah. Floridians, like we go to the West Coast because well, it's next like week. beaches. Next week we're going to do West Coast shit. Wait, where are you going? To New Oh yeah, that's right. That's right. Yeah. You keep telling me and yeah. I keep forgetting. <laughs> <laughs> I keep forgetting. Okay. So anyway, malaria. The cool that not cool. That's a poor choice of words. Poor choice of words. <laughs> but the weird thing about malaria, like uncommon from other ones, I guess it's it's a parasite, unlike the other ones that are viral. Yeah, it is. Exactly. So that's like the yeah. cool thing about yeah. about it. But um yeah, so basically the mosquitoes carry the parasite. The same way the mosquitoes carry the virus, they I carry feel like the parasite. It's scarier that it's a parasite versus I a virus. hate anything that's parasitic. I know. Because, because a smarter. parasitic infection is like you don't benefit anything. No, yeah. They benefit off of you. Yeah. And they probably kill you in the process. Yeah. Yeah. They're just, I feel like they're smarter than viruses. So they're just like, I'm not cool with that. Mm-mm. I'm not cool with that. Oh, and wait for a mini episode coming up on, on a pi- uh, parasite situation. Yes. We're going to be doing that sometime soon. Anyway. Um, yeah. So interesting that it's a parasite, but it's a mosquito born disease. Yeah. Even though it's a parasite. Um, in 2021, nearly half of the world's population was at risk of malaria. That is huge. Yeah. Nearly half of the world in 2021. Anyway, that year, there were an estimated 247 million cases of malaria worldwide. Wow. 
the estimated number of malaria deaths stood at 619,000 in 2021. Mm -hmm. um, the WHO African region carries a disproportionately high share of the global malaria burden. In 2021, the region was home to 95% of malaria cases and 96% of malaria deaths. Children under five accounted for about 80% of all malaria deaths in the region. That's horrible. I know. Um, symptoms usually start with 10 to 15 days of getting bitten by a infected by an infected mosquito. Symptoms may be mild for some people, especially for those who have had malaria infection before. Severe symptoms um, include extreme tiredness and fatigue, impaired consciousness. Um, so it, it like messes with your brain and your cognitive function too. Yeah, 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 yeah definitely. Um, <sighs> multiple convulsions, um, difficulty breathing, dark and bloody urine, um, jaundice, yeah. which is a yellow. Jaundice heavy. is a huge thing because since it's like in the red blood cells, it oh. can affect them. They release bilirubin and all of that. Yeah. Oof. And then abnormal bleeding, as yes. you were just talking about that. <clears throat> Um, people with severe symptoms should get emergency care right away. Malaria infection during pregnancy can also cause premature delivery or delivery of a baby with low um, birth weight. Mm -hmm. Preventative chemotherapy is the use, yeah, is the use of medicines either alone or in combination to prevent malaria infections and their consequences. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> I have a family member that she's on Tolaquan. No, but it's another anti-malarial drug, and it's for a weird... Um, There's a lot of malaria drugs, but we, sometimes people take it just to prophylax for when they're traveling outside. Well, she takes it, and it straight up makes her feel awful, but she has to titrate it and whatnot. And it's for, like, this abnormality that she has, that she has on really, really high platelets. Mm -hmm. So it controls her high platelet count. Oh. Yeah, it's crazy. And it's an anti-malarial drug, and well, anyway... Um, since October 2021, WHO recommends broad use of the malaria vaccine among children living in the region with moderate to high malaria transmissions shown to significantly reduce malaria and deadly severe malaria among you know, yeah. children. So. so this like the, oh, uh, well, yeah. Yeah. Um, but the good thing about like malaria is that we do have, like it is treatable. Yeah. Right. Like instead of like the supportive care, I think that was like the biggest difference with the viruses. It's a lot of supportive care. But with malaria, like we do have like medicines for it, which is why people that usually travel outside, they usually ask for prophylaxis, which is like treating you before you even get the infection. So it's like prevented. Yeah. So um, there's, you know, a lot of these are like the quinins, the yeah. primaquin and the, the chloroquine and all these things. Atovaquone is a really big one too. Um, the other thing that I was going to say about malaria, which is very interesting and it's just like a fun fact. Um, mm -hmm is that they actually think that sickle cell disease is an evolutionary response to malaria. That's so cool. That's a theory. It's yeah. a theory. I'm not saying it's like a proven thing. Yeah, right? yeah. But it is a theory because malaria infects red blood cells, right? So when you have sickle cell disease, the red blood cells sickle, right? right. And the malaria cannot live inside of that sickled cell. So when it says, when you're saying sickle, that means that it's like a different shape. It is a different shape. It's a sickle shape. So okay. it literally looks like a half moon instead of like the normal donut like looking the, almost like a donut looking yeah exactly so it's yeah. sickles right right so they um there is a theory that um sickle cell was like an adaptation huh. to malaria and then now it's genetic yeah. right like yeah. i mean or how can i say this like it is a genetic disease uh we tested in the newborn metabolic screens and stuff like that but there is an ongoing theory that it's an that's, adaptation to malaria. So, so but it that, is a theory that yeah. it's like really um, that they think that that malaria because of all the infections in yeah. malaria that people developed sickle cell. this sickle cell or whatever that to is protect so them cool. from malaria. That is so cool. Okay, yeah. yeah so that's malaria, and you got to watch out for it because now here in Florida we're seeing. Yes, we are, and there's actually a CDC health advisory. We will that. we will post it. It's, yeah, I'll it's send it to you. just just happened like a couple of days from now recording them right now it's september 4th 2023 so yeah yeah mm -hmm. anyway so quickly going through these uh chagas don't you just love chagas chagas is another parasite it and is. i hate it i think it's disgusting <laughs> it causes a lot of things like it dilation does. of everything dilation of the heart dilation of the colon dilation of the uh, like a lot of things yeah and it's disgusting because it's not just um a mosquito Mm -hmm. Like, it's the mosquito that infects the reduvid bug. Mm -hmm. Right? It's called the reduvid bug. I'm pretty sure it's called the reduvid bug. Right here. 
Vectra, Vector bug. Boar. I'm pretty sure that's the Reduvid bug. Okay. But anyways, the Reduvid bug, and mm -hmm. then it's called the kissing, kissing disease. Because the Reduvid bug actually goes and like injects the parasite. Ugh. Like it bites you and it injects the parasite. Ugh. And then you got chagas. Gross. Trypanosome. Gross. Jejuni or something like that. Trypanosome. Yeah. Uh, Trypanosome. Cruzy. Yeah, Trypanosoma cruzy. Yep. That's the name of the parasite. Not Jejuni. Jejuni is your gut. Cruzy. <laughs> <laughs> but it's, a, it's been around since 1909 by a Brazilian doctor. Like, it's crazy. It's one of the older ones. Yeah, like, it is. It is. Identified. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so, yeah, it's transmitted by consumption of food, beverages, um, contaminated with this parasite. Um, so, for example, con contact with feces, urine, you know, anything that these bugs are, you know, in contact with. Passage of infected mother to her newborn can happen. Um, blood or blood product transfusion and infected donors also. Um, organ transplants, because of course, or laboratory accidents, yep. which tends to happen. Um, there's two phases of it. The initial acute phase lasts for about two months after infection. During the acute phase, a high number of parasites circulate the blood. Oh, God, that sounds so disgusting to me. Yep. A high number of parasites circulate the blood, but most case symptoms are absent or mild. That is bonkers how the hell are you having like parasites all over your body and you don't feel anything yep because they're living inside you Ugh. they are benefiting from you Ugh. in less than 50 percent of people bit <laughs> by them. i just had a thing if you're watching this on patreon you'll see us like just just like i don't know like we're, we're, we're both like shake. just yeah Ugh. anyway in less than 50 percent of been of people bitten by a by that bug i i'm not gonna try and pronounce it i'm pretty sure it's called the reduvid bug <laughs> Yeah, that's probably big. like the more common. Like I have here, yeah, like, like from the CDC is like or WHO's HO's name. But anyway, characteristic first visible signs can be skin lesions or a purplish swelling on the lids of one eye. Additionally, yes. they can present fever, headache, and large lymph nodes. All of those other things that we've mentioned: chest pain, abdominal pain. Mm -hmm. During the chronic phase, the parasites are hidden mainly in the hearts and digestive muscles. Yep, that's what I was saying. Yeah. They, ca they cause like enlargement of the heart. Mm. They cause like, yeah, dilated cardiomyopathies, this, this uh, is, dilated colon. This is crazy. One to three decades later. Yep. So third, up to 30 years later, um, up to a third of patients suffer from cardiac disorders and up to one to 10 suffer from digestive typically enlargement of esophagus or colon yep. neurological or mixed alterations yep. in later years the infection in those patients can cause a destruction of the nervous system and heart muscle consequent cardiac arrhythmias or progressive heart failure and sudden death yep 30 years later yep you're living with that freaking parasite parasites in yep. you for 30 years Ooh! get me out of that get me out of that <laughs> mental space <laughs> 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 It's terrible. No, no. Oh, God, I'm all clammy now. That's why I hate parasites. Oh, curable, it, curable of treatment is initiated soon after infection in chronic patients. Anti-parasitic um, treatment can potentially prevent or curb disease progression and prevent transmission, or, for instance, mother-to-child infection. Up to a third of chronically infected people develop cardiac alterations, and one in ten develop digestion, you know, all that, so... You gotta just, and in Latin America, apparently it's like very common, which is, it got discovered by a Brazilian doctor in 1909. Mm -hmm. um, in, <clears throat> so pretty much vector control, like yeah. cover everything, like water, stagnant water, where, where like. If I saw a mosquito, I would die. If I saw a duvid bug on me, I would freaking throw up right on the spot. <laughs> oh my God. Okay. And yeah. if you see the reduvid bug, it's like very typical. Yeah. Um, I included it here because it like it, it kind of still works like a mosquito and where it like bites you like it, I hate it. I hate it. the same thing it. it's like the same type of like vector type but it has like a with. like it has a diamond shape on Ugh. or I think it does I don't know I know that the reduvid I'll bug post is it. very I'll post it it is very typical look at it, look at it in our Instagram you'll you'll see a Oop. picture of it I'll put it there now e e e e e sorry three yeah. e's eastern equine encephalitis yeah. virus um it affects People. It's pretty popular too. Yeah, um, it spread to people to people by. But the this mosquito. is like the word encephalitis. Like this virus usually causes like altered mental status, yeah. inflammation. It's scary. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It, so encephalitis is like inflammation of your brain. 
So, or, um, uh, encephalitis, it, yeah, it's it's, like, it is. It's like inflammation of the brain, exactly. Okay. So, in layman's terms, I guess. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, that's like the easiest way. And that's right. Like, yeah. Breaking it down, Barney style, it's that. Yeah, like, exactly. Like, I know it's more like the tissue, like the struggle or whatever, but like. Exactly. We could talk about like the difference in tissues and stuff like that, but yeah, yeah so it is inflammation in the brain. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. All right. So, it's spread by people to people because of these stupid mosquitoes and their grossness. <laughs> Only a few cases are reported in the U.S., each year, most cases are in the eastern or Gulf Coast uh, states, so we got to be careful with that. Mm-hmm. Um, although rare, EEE is very serious. Approximately 30% of people with EEE die, and many survivors are ongoing neurologic problems. Yeah. Um, there are no vaccines to prevent um, the medicine. I mean, there are no vaccines to prevent or medicines to treat EEE. You can reduce your risk of infection with EEE by, again, repelling all the vector control yes. situations. Healthcare providers diagnose EEE um, based on history, um, like where you traveled, you know, all that history of possible exposure, you know, and then of course lab testing. Yeah. Um, your healthcare provider can order tests. Go ahead and yeah, yeah. yeah it's Which gonna is have gonna to be, be like... something. Yeah, when you're, you don't just like walk into a clinic and you're like, I think I have encephalitis. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. You have encephalitis here at the hospital. You're getting worked up, and yeah. it's like usually like a million dollar workup because we need to rule out so many, so things, many things before yeah. we say this was just a mosquito that bit you and inflamed your brain. You know? Mm-hmm. So it's pretty much supportive care, rest, fluids, over the counter pain meds. Yes. And then for severe, you know, cases, they have to be hospitalized. You know, tra- um, intravenous fluids. You yes. know, all those things. Okay. Then the St. Louis, St. Louis encephalitis. Yeah. I hadn't heard of this one. Yeah, it's also popular, yeah. but it's also another form of encephalitis. It's like a virus that causes encephalitis. Yeah, yeah. that's it. Okay. So, so, and the same thing. It's like mosquito thing. borne. Nausea vomiting. That. Nausea vomiting. So it's just a different type of virus, but causes a similar similar symptoms. Exactly. And that's what I'm, well, what I'm seeing here is also like men- or meningitis. So Yeah. So encephalitis is like inflammation of like the brain tissue mm-hmm. and then meningitis is inflammation of meninges so it's like the like one of the layers of okay the nerves and all okay that. yeah and then in rare cases it's it causes long-term disability or death because of that and you know what you're just saying like how it affects your nervous system yes. and that's in that mm-hmm. sense and okay so the same type of symptoms that's why all of these are hard to diagnose so you know dizziness nausea rah, rah, yeah, all those things. which all of those are brain symptoms or neuro symptoms yeah they typically get worse over a period of several days or weeks some patients recover after this period other develop signs of central nervous system infections including infection of the brain which mm-hmm. is encephalitis membranes around the brain or spinal cord meningitis um coma can even develop in severe cases and among patients diagnosed with SLE, 5 to 20% die. Um, the risk of dying increases with age. So no vaccines either, no medicines, just supportive care as well. And of course, vector control. So what is the lesson learned today? Yeah. All mosquitoes should die. All of them should die. All of them should die. And if that doesn't happen, then y'all better be wearing your mosquito repellent. Absolutely. Absolutely. Is yellow fever like a more common one or no? Yeah, yellow fever is more common. Okay, because that's the last one I have here. Yeah, yellow fever. And we have a vaccine for yellow fever. Oh, okay. Uh, It's not given in the U.S. because it's not that common, but it is. uh, There is a vaccine for it. Okay, so yeah, the very last one, guys, um, at least of the common ones that we're naming here, which, as you could tell, it's a long one because, I mean, there's so many. Yeah, there's so many, and this is just the common one. And I'm like running through them at this point. Um, Yellow fever virus, and it's, you know, transmitted by mosquitoes. Um, as of 2023, 34 countries in Africa and 13 countries in Central and South America are either endemic for or have regions that are endemic for yellow fever. Yellow yep. fever is prevented by a vaccine, yep. which is safe and affordable. A single dose of yellow fever vaccine is sufficient to grant lifelong um, protection. A modeling study based on African data sources estimates that the burden of yellow fever during 2013 was 84,000 yeah, 84, to 170,000 severe cases and so on. Um, in- incubation period for yellow fever is three to six days. Many people do not experience symptoms. Common symptoms include fever, muscle, all of the same all symptoms. All the things, yeah. All the same things that we've been saying. Um, most of these disappear three to four days. A small percentage of patients enter a second, more toxic phase within 24 hours of recovering from initial symptoms. High fever returns and several body symptoms are effect- um, systems are affected, usually the liver and the kidneys. In this phase, people are likely to develop jaundice. Um, as we said earlier, the yellowing of the skin, the eyes, 
um, dark urine and abdominal pain and vomiting. Bleeding can occur from the mouth, nose, eyes, or stomach. Half of the patients who enter the toxic phase die within seven to 10 days. Hence why the vaccine is important because this is pretty bad. Yeah. And if you're, it just doesn't like you, you can get the vaccine here. Yeah. But so if you're traveling to somewhere where yellow fever is very um, high, you can get a vaccine. Okay. And then there's no specific antiviral drug for yellow fever. Patients should rest, stay hydrated, and seek medical advice. And um, PCR testing is a type of blood test. Yeah. Um, sometimes can detect the virus in early, early stages of the disease. So you could, you know, that could help you out with the prognosis. So that was mosquito-borne illnesses. Holy shite. <laughs> I told you it was a long one. It is a long one. We could have made it a two-parter, but we're like, no, let's just... We don't, we don't necessarily have time. We have, like, busy lives. So yes. We're like, yeah. yeah. But this was, I mean, it, we just kept on but seeing they, it coming up. And we're like, you know, it's, it's a yeah. good one to touch upon. Yeah. And also, I think it's good just because a lot of the mosquito-borne illnesses have a lot of very similar symptoms. Yeah, yeah. So it's, like, good things to watch out for. And there are ones that are more common than others. And yeah. It's good information. Yeah. And a lot of people forget, like, since we're in such a big city, a lot of people forget that that is even a thing. But it is a thing. Yes, it is. You know, the West Nile virus is a thing it's here. A thing. You know? So it's just because we live in Miami doesn't mean that you're immune from it it's very much a thing <laughs> put on some mosquito repellent For get those citronella like, candles out yeah get like me like lemongrass all <laughs> just die just dying yeah, your fumes so yeah off. i i off to no sponsor us i'm pretty sure you could smell it from outside of my apartment like from outside as in Not outside of the building your neighbors like no my neighbors literally came out and they're like oh is there like a <laughs> We just smell uh, something. It's not bad. Oh and they're like, but we just smell it. And I'm like, I don't know what you're talking about. You're like, yeah, I don't know. I don't smell anything. I don't smell anything. <laughs> but anyways. All right, guys. Check us out on, you know, all the socials. Instagram, TikTok, whatnot. On the Wisdom app as well. On yes. Reddit as well. We're on Ooh, Reddit. Reddit. Yes. Facebook. Um, also, check us out on Patreon. Yeah. These episodes that you hear on audio on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, and all streaming platforms, only on audio, you could see us shaking it out with these parasites that we were talking about on Patreon. Okay. And, it, you know, they're a little bit longer because I cut out and I edit out a lot less in the video formats versus, versus the audio ones. Yeah. I do edit those out a lot more. Like, I shorten them up and stuff. So check that out. And then in Patreon, we have Patreon exclusive episodes as well that only come out in a Patreon and they're also video. Um, so and those are saucier. Yeah. Salacious. Those are definitely saucier, salacious. All the <laughs> zesty. <laughs> zesty words. <laughs> those things. And our Patreons come out on Fridays. Yes. Podcasts come out on Tuesdays. Patreons come out on Fridays. Exactly. So check us out there. Thank you all for the support. Keep it up. We love doing this and we love talking to you all. Comment, like, subscribe, do all the things. And we'll see you on the next one. Yeah. Bye. <laughs> Bye. Beautiful. <laughs>